Design elements can be fun, but if you don't have good tools, it can be a chore. That's why I decided to try and make a simple level generator to be able to create levels fast. I always like this kind of a seamless approach to the level generation. Just like in, in the Super Mario Maker, where you, you can just create the level, click play and try it out and go back to the editing. So that's why I wanted to kind of recreate the same kind of feeling as the Super Mario Maker. The level generator is split into two different sections, a level generator and a chapter generator. Basically, chapter consists of multiple different sized levels that are created in the level generator. And Here's how the generator works. The level is made up of a 2D grid which has a height and a width. Uh, you can then decide a block to use which are basic scriptable objects that contain an ID and a prefab to spawn. 2D area indices correspond to the world coordinates so whenever you click an area a block will be added to those coordinates of the array. You can also group different objects together to be able to have the functionality to work in a group instead of individually. Let's say you have a trampoline. Uh, if it's an individual trampoline, it will activate when its collider is triggered. But if it's grouped with another trampoline, the whole group activates as soon as one trampoline is triggered. The levels are saved in JSON format, which includes the list of every block, uh, their position, function and a group. These saved levels can then be loaded in the chapter generator and positions however you like. Making the chapter generator was a lot of fun. I just added a few UI elements that can be dragged and dropped. And because I already have data of the level, I can create a procedural texture easily because I can just look at the level size and create a texture with the pixels of that size and then every different kind of block will represent different color on, on that pixel. So it's actually surprisingly easy to do. And you can move those UI elements uh, however you want. Uh, whenever you click play, it will create all of those levels. Then you can try and play the level. I've also made some modular tile map meshes for each of the blocks so that they would change depending on the adjacent blocks. It's basically just a scriptable object with the meshes and the kind of a material that you want. You can call this kind of a tile map database to try and to find the right kind of a tile map for the right function of the block. Let's say you have a one-way block. You ask a database for a one-way block. It will look for the right scriptable object tile map that I've created, that I've added to the database. And as soon as it uh, finds one, it will just return it. It's been very easy to create a new tile map. That's what I like, at least. <laughs> I think I'm using scriptable objects a lot, <laughs> and I, it, that's not a bad thing at all. I just think they're super useful. I found this source very helpful while implementing the time map logic for it. It's a very simple trick to use a bitwise operator to select the right tile from the tile map. I'm trying to explain this uh, as easily as possible. Since we have two states, either there is a block or there is not a block. And there are four different directions. That will give us 2 to the power of 4, which equals to 16 different meshes we need to have. And now that we have this, uh, 16 different meshes, we can use this kind of a bitwise uh, logic to select whether or not there's something, uh, something on the left or right or above or be below. Depending on those flags, it will pick the right from mesh from the array. But that will actually require you to place all of the meshes in, in the right order. You need to know what mesh belongs to the first index and will, what will be in the 16th position. And so there's always room for a human error. I was thinking about uh, creating a solution to just drop all of the meshes into an array and you would dynamically know which mesh to pick just to reduce the human error. I was going with the, the bitwise operator uh, style but then I just realized that we can just basically, because I already named all of the tiles in, in this kind of a format where I name all of the directions that the tile map is connected to such as L, L being left, right being right, up being up, <laughs> I mean U being up and D being down. I can just basically look at the block and see if it has adjacent block to the left of it, to right of it and etc. So you can basically just append the string and when you have the string ready you can just parse the strings of the meshes and look for the right mesh with the curve prefix. Some would say there's human error in that also because you could name the stuff wrong. That is true, but I think it's a lot easier to fix instead of trying to wrap your head around the bitwise operations and, you know, trying to figure out which, which one is which. I learned a lot about uh, tile maps. Things that I realized is that uh, you need to make the sure the connector faces that I like to call them, how their normals align the same direction as the adjacent block. That way we can prevent the same from happening because there's not this kind of a crevice in between the blocks. But making seamless UV mapping is a pain though, so I'm probably doing and I'm probably doing it wrong, but I just kind of made the UV somewhat align with the others. 
and because we are actually looking from quite afar, but people probably don't even know this, but yeah, I still want to kind of align them and make sure they're not absolutely terrible. And there are some other solutions such as triplanar mapping, where the UV is projected depending on the world coordinates, uh, as far as I understand, which seems like a very cool approach. So I might try it in the future, but so far my approach has been good enough. So the models look really interesting from the little tests I made, but uh, as soon as I tried it in, in a bigger map, it looked like this. Yeah, not that great. <laughs> they still look very individual and yeah, not that great. So the problem is that, a lot of different problems actually, <laughs> but I think the main problem is that the tile maps that are in the middle are very easy to recognize because they have unique kind of uh, pattern on them. And as soon as the pattern uh, repeats, it's very noticeable for the viewer. Even though let's say there's a there's a bigger group of blocks, it still doesn't look like it's a whole one whole block. It still uh, looks like it's made up of, of different Lego pieces. So there are a couple ways we can improve this. The first one is the obvious, where we flatten the tiles in the middle to make it less repetitive, but that way we also need to add some kind of texture to it, because if it's just plain flat, it's going to look quite uninteresting. So we need to figure out the weight for that. The other one is that we could add this kind of a frame to every side of the block to be able to fr kind of frame a bigger group of blocks to kind of connect them into one big blob makes the group look like it's a, it's one object. And also we can see from here that it, it looks very flat. It looks like it's 2D even though it's 3D. So that's why we also would need to increase the scale on the z-axis to really give it the feeling that it's actually part of the environment instead of just blocks on top of another. But yeah, I made some changes and this is what I ended up with. Definitely not perfect, it still looks very bland and it looks like it's made of, out of clay, but I think it's still a step in the right direction. I also experimented with adding a bit of scale to the z-axis and it actually looks quite okay. But sometimes it just feels like very frustrating because it feels like I'm having a battle against a Hydra. As soon as I solve a problem, three other problems arise. But I mean, that's game dev in a nutshell, I guess. <laughs> And some other things that I still need to do. I can save and load stuff in JSON right now, but I can only do it in runtime. But I still need to load them in the editor to actually create scenes for the for the final build. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see you next time. Bye.